Hello, let's learn about Thomas Fuller today. The enslaved African genius who could calculate faster than men with pen and paper, exposing a truth that terrified slave owners and ignited the abolitionist movement across two continents. What if I told you that in 1788, two white men traveled from Pennsylvania to a Virginia plantation to test whether an enslaved African man could truly perform mathematical miracles with nothing but his mind? And what if I told you that what they discovered that day would shake the foundations of everything slavery was built upon? Before we dive into this incredible story, I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below and tell me where you're watching from and how the weather is treating you today. Let me know how you're doing. We've been taught so much about what our ancestors supposedly couldn't do. We've heard the lies about intellectual inferiority, about limited capacity, about needing to be civilized. But what if I told you that in the 1700s, there was an enslaved African man who could solve complex mathematical calculations in his head faster than educated men with paper and pencil. A man whose genius was so undeniable that his story spread from Virginia to France and Germany, becoming ammunition for the abolitionist movement. Today, I'm taking you back to 1724, when a 14-year-old African boy was kidnapped from his homeland, likely somewhere between present-day Liberia and Benin, and shipped across the Atlantic into slavery. His name was Thomas Fuller, but history would come to know him by another name, the Virginia Calculator, and his story is about to challenge everything you thought you knew about the mathematics, about genius, about what our ancestors were capable of even in chains. Thomas Fuller arrived in America in 1724 and was sold into slavery to a family named Cox in Alexandria, Virginia. He would spend his entire life, over 60 years, working on their 232-acre farm, four miles west of Alexandria. He never learned to read or write. He received absolutely no formal education in arithmetic or mathematics, and yet, what he could do with numbers would astound the most educated minds of his time. You see, Fuller taught himself mathematics. How? He started by counting to 10. Then he counted to 100, and he said that when he reached 100, he thought himself a very clever fellow. But he didn't stop there. Do you know what he did next? He counted the hairs in a cow's tail. All of them and he found exactly 2,872 hairs. Think about that for a moment. A man with no education, no books, no teachers, teaching himself mathematics by counting cow hairs. But that was just the beginning. Now, if you're finding this story as powerful as I am, hit that like button and drop a comment telling me what topic baffles you the most. What historical mysteries would you like me to research and make a video about? Your suggestions shape this channel, and I read every single comment. By the time Thomas Fuller was 70 years old, his reputation had spread throughout the region. People whispered about the enslaved man who could solve impossible math problems in his head. Word reached the Pennsylvania Abolition Society, and two of its members, William Harchern and Samuel Coates, decided they had to see this for themselves. These were Quaker abolitionists, men who were fighting to prove that black people deserved freedom and equality. They needed evidence. They needed proof that the arguments for slavery were built on lies. So they traveled to the Cox farm to test Thomas Fuller themselves. And what happened next would be documented by none other than Dr. Benjamin Rush, a physician, a founding father of the United States, and a member of the Pennsylvania Abolition Society. Rush was searching for scientific proof of black intelligence to strengthen the anti-slavery cause. What Harchern and Coates reported back to him exceeded anything he could have imagined. Here's exactly what happened, documented in Rush's own report published in 1789. Listen carefully to these numbers, because they're real, they're verified, and they're extraordinary. First, they asked Fuller, how many seconds are there in a year and a half? Now, think about that question. How long would it take you to figure that out? 
even with a calculator. Fuller stood there, this grey-haired elderly man who had worked hard labour his entire life, and in about two minutes, he gave them the answer, 47,304,000 seconds. But they weren't done testing him. The second question was even more complex. They asked, how many seconds has a man lived who is 70 years, 17 days, and 12 hours old? Fuller answered, in a minute and a half. His response, 2,210,500,800 seconds. Now here's where it gets really interesting. One of the gentlemen, probably Harchern or Coates, had been working out these problems on paper, while Fuller calculated in his head. And when Fuller gave his answer to the second question, the man with the pen looked up and said, You're wrong. The sum is not as great as you said. Can you imagine that moment? An enslaved man, standing before white men who held his life in their hands, being told he was wrong. What would you do? Thomas Fuller didn't back down. He looked at that man and said something that would echo through history. He said, Top Mosser, you forget the leap year. The leap year. The man with the paper and pen had forgotten to account for leap years in his calculation. When he added those seconds back in, both their answers matched exactly. Thomas Fuller, calculating entirely in his head, had been right all along. And he had caught the error of an educated white man working with pen and paper. Let that sink in for a moment. Before we continue, I want to pause and say something. If you're still with me, that means you understand that these stories matter. Our history matters. The truth about our ancestors' brilliance matters. This channel is still young and trying to grow, and your subscription means the world to me. It's not just a number. It's a statement that says black genius deserves to be remembered and celebrated. Please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Your support keeps these stories alive. The two men gave Fuller a third question, this one even more complicated. They asked, suppose a farmer has six sows, and each sow has six female pigs the first year, and they all increase in the same proportion to the end of eight years. How many sows will the farmer then have? This is exponential growth. This is the kind of problem that would make most people reach for paper immediately. Fuller solved it in his head in 10 minutes. The answer, 34,588,806 sows. And once again, he was absolutely correct. Dr. Benjamin Rush published this account in 1789, and it spread like wildfire. The story reached beyond American shores. It traveled to France, where revolutionary thinkers Jacques-Pierre Brissot and Henri Grégoire were fighting for human rights. They wrote about Thomas Fuller as living proof that black people had the same intellectual capacity as anyone else. Brissot wrote, These instances prove, without a doubt, that the capacity of the Negroes may be extended to anything, that they have only need of instruction and liberty. Instruction and liberty. That's all that was missing not intelligence, not capability, not genius, just opportunity. Thomas Fuller's story became fuel for the abolitionist movement across two continents because it exposed a truth that the entire system of slavery tried to hide, that African people were intellectually equal, and in Fuller's case, intellectually superior, to their enslavers. His genius couldn't be denied, couldn't be explained away, couldn't be dismissed. And here's something that makes this story even more profound. During that interview, one of the men remarked that it was a pity Fuller had never received an education equal to his genius. You know what Fuller said? He said, No, Mossa, it is best I had no learning, for many learned men be great fools. Read between those lines. This man understood something deep. He understood that formal education didn't make someone intelligent. He understood that wisdom and genius existed independent of schooling. And perhaps he understood something else too, that staying uneducated 
in the eyes of his enslavers kept him safer, kept him underestimated, kept him alive. According to the accounts, Elizabeth Cox, the woman who enslaved Fuller, refused to sell him even though she received offers of large sums of money from curious people who wanted to own this mathematical genius. Fuller spoke of her with respect and mentioned his gratitude for not being sold. But think about what that really means. He was grateful not to be sold like property. He was grateful for the bare minimum of not being ripped away from the only home he knew. That's not kindness. That's the horror of slavery in a single sentence. What part of Thomas Fuller's story has moved you the most? Is it his genius in mathematics? Is it the leap year moment when he corrected the educated white man? Is it his wisdom about learned fools? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I want to know what resonated with your spirit. Thomas Fuller died in December 1790 at approximately 80 years old. His obituary appeared in the Boston newspaper Columbian Sentinel, and whoever wrote it understood the magnitude of what had been lost. The obituary said this, Had his opportunity of improvement been equal to those of thousands of his fellow men, neither the Royal Society of London, the Academy of Sciences at Paris, nor even a Newton himself, need have been ashamed to acknowledge him a brother in science. A brother to Isaac Newton. Think about that. An enslaved African man, who never learned to read or write, who taught himself by counting to 100 and counting cow hairs, was being compared to Isaac Newton by his contemporaries. But here's the question we have to ask. How many Thomas Fullers were there? How many brilliant African minds were stolen, enslaved, worked to death, and buried in unmarked graves? How many geniuses never got the chance to show the world what they could do? How many mathematical prodigies, artists, philosophers, inventors, and leaders died in chains, their gifts lost to history forever. Thomas Fuller's story survived because two abolitionists documented it, because Benjamin Rush published it, because it served a political purpose in the fight against slavery. But for every Thomas Fuller we know about, there were thousands we don't, thousands whose genius died with them, whose stories were never written down, whose names we'll never know. And yet, they were there, our ancestors were brilliant. They were resourceful. They were innovative. They survived the Middle Passage. They survived chattel slavery. They survived centuries of oppression. And they did more than survive. They excelled. They created. They built. They calculated. They remembered. They passed down knowledge through oral traditions. They found ways to preserve their humanity in the most inhumane conditions imaginable. Some scholars have suggested that Thomas Fuller might have been from the Baysari people of West Africa, where there was a rich tradition of specialists trained in the memorization of complex calculations. If that's true, then Fuller wasn't just a lone genius. He was carrying forward a mathematical tradition from his homeland, keeping it alive even in bondage. That means African mathematics existed long before European contact. That means our ancestors had sophisticated systems of knowledge that slavery tried to erase. And Thomas Fuller, working on that Virginia farm, was a living bridge between African mathematical traditions and the new world. He was proof that you cannot enslave the mind. You can chain the body, but genius will find a way to manifest itself. The story of Thomas Fuller isn't just about one man's extraordinary ability. It's about the systematic suppression of black excellence. It's about the lengths that the institution of slavery went to in order to maintain the lie of black inferiority. And it's about the undeniable truth that broke through anyway, that couldn't be hidden, that forced even those who benefited from slavery to admit, if only in private, if only in obituaries, that they were wrong. When you think about the brilliance that was lost, it's heartbreaking. But when you think about the brilliance that survived, despite everything, it's inspiring. Thomas Fuller is part of our legacy. His genius runs in our bloodline. His resilience lives in us. 
and his story reminds us that no matter what systems are designed to hold us back, excellence will always find a way to shine through. If this story has touched you, if it's made you think differently about our ancestors and their capabilities, if it's filled you with pride or moved your spirit, then please, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share it with someone who needs to hear this truth. Our stories deserve to be remembered. Our ancestors' genius deserves to be celebrated. And your subscription keeps this wisdom alive. Thank you for taking this journey with me back to 1788, to that Virginia plantation, to the moment when Thomas Fuller looked at an educated white man and said, Top Mossa, you forget to leap year. Thank you for remembering with me. Thank you for honoring with me. And thank you for understanding that when we tell these stories, we're not just talking about the past. We're reclaiming our narrative, we're celebrating our heritage, and we're passing down the truth to the next generation. Thomas Fuller, the Virginia Calculator, an African genius who could count faster than the wind, who could calculate circles around educated men, who never forgot the leap year, and who will never be forgotten as long as we keep telling his story. Until next time, keep exploring our history, keep questioning the narratives you've been taught, and keep remembering that our ancestors were extraordinary.